Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in the series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the transaction details screen. It's just a single screen which has all the transaction details. Should be simple and straightforward, so without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are. Uh, I had just have a screenshot, there's nothing uh, complicated, so I didn't want to show it on my phone. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So we here we have the transaction details. So when you tap on a transaction, you get the transaction details, right? You've got the value, which uh, is right up front, which is probably the most important thing. You've got the category. Uh, if, if, if you don't have a category, then there would be that CTA uh, with the search icon and uh, the text that says tag. You have which account it's from. Um, you have the date. The weird thing here is that there's no time mentioned over here. Uh, for some reason, they show the time on the transaction list uh, list item, but they don't show it over here. Um, and here also the format of this is like super weird. Wednesday, comma, Jan dot three apostrophe 24. I think the format of here could be a lot more better. Um, something like Wednesday, three Jan, comma, 24, right? Or third Jan, something better, right? Here there are like, there's a comma, there's a period, and you know, of course there's an apostrophe as well, right? So too many things. Then you have paid to, you have the merchant name. Um, and in this case, I just have a screenshot where if it's, if there's an empty state, how would it be? All right, uh, small things over here. Here there's a question mark. Here there's no question mark. You know, small things, attention to detail over here. Um, you have account in, then you have add transaction to a group. So you can add a transaction to a group. You have notes. Um, couple of things over here, I can see here that the uh, the padding is not the same between these two over here. Here it's in all caps. Uh, this These are not in all caps here. This is a gray icon. This is not a gray icon. Um, and add receipt, you know, there's barely any difference as you can see over here. So uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies over here. Too many things that's happening. And then you have this section, which I don't really understood why they made this decision like this, you know, double surface thing, you know, exclude from cash flow. Turn this on if you don't want this to affect your cash flow calculations. Now, first of all, just reading this once, it's super confusing. It's not really clear what this even does, right? So the whole concept of cash flow, I've actually removed that entire concept of cash flow itself because it doesn't really make sense. And instead of calling it cash flow, I've called that entire concept as analytics. If you've seen the previous videos, you will understand what I'm talking about. So I don't really believe that, you know, explaining it like this and saying that if you don't want this transaction to affect cash flow calculations, it is so complicated, right? It might be, you know, easy for someone who is like a pro user, but someone who's simple, who doesn't really understand what this cash flow concept is, uh, you know, somebody who's not into finance may not really understand what this is and, and they probably might not know what it does, right? Um, so this again definitely needs a lot of uh, improvement, right? Now, before we go ahead and look at the designs, let's actually look at some benchmarking and see how other competitors do this. So here I have a few examples, right? So this one, all of these are from Mobin. So this is Starling Bank and this is the transaction details, right? So you have the price right on top. You have the logo of the merchant. You've got the merchant. You've got uh, date, time. You've got the location. We can't pull the location uh, in this case because all the information is coming from the bank statement. All right. You've got the category and uh, you can see that they're following this, uh, you know, this boxes concept. So you've got a surface and then on top of that, you've got, uh, you know, this the surface or this card basically. Um, and this is just like a continuation and you know, they've separated into separate sections and then each of these list items you can sort of tap on. All right. Um, and if you see most of the apps, you know, have a very similar pattern and structure, right? So this is Revolut here again, price number one, here you've got the merchant, you've got the logo, you've got the date and time, uh, they've got the location, we might not have location. And again, they're sort of categorized, you know, status card statement into one group, category, merchant, exclude from analytics and all as another one, right? So here again, exclude from analytics is pretty simple and straightforward. You know, just something that looks like this is a lot easy to understand, right? Because when you say things like exclude from cash flow and then turn this on, if you don't want this transaction to affect cash flow transactions, it's it's a lot for the user to understand, right? So excluding from analytics, all right? Um, then you've got, you can add a note. Um, here is another one, which is Moniz, uh, very simple. Uh, the price right up front, you've got the logo. I don't know, they've blurred out this information. Again, date, start code, basically the same layout. You've got left, uh, the labels on the left and the actual information on the right, pretty much following the same pattern. Um, what is this? This one is Chase, uh, Chase UK. Um, here again, uh, the price gets the maximum attention, so, or, the, or basically the transaction value. You've got the location. Uh, there's no date over here. Okay, so August 2023, uh, 19, 20, 
1922. All right. Um, you've got categories. You've got a bunch of things, right? So, all right. Uh, moving forward. And here again, you've got separations with this uh, different color and all of these again. So they all look pretty much the exact same. Actually, these both are the same screens. All right. This one is Monzo. Again, a very similar ad notes, ad tags, ad receipts, you know, whatever. Um, this one is N26 again. So details, category from type, name of the merchant, you know, yada, yada, yada. Right. So it's pretty much very similar. And with the design language that we are following, there's not much we can really do. Um, now, this sort of looks fine. You know, there's no problem with this as such. Although I don't really understand what happens when I turn this on. I still haven't been able to figure this out. I know it, it's a bookmark icon, but what it does, I don't really know. I don't know where to find that. Um, but anyway, so let's look at the iterations over here. So the first thing I did was I started off with this, uh, with, with just, you know, the transaction value, date and time. All right. And I put this into its own box because we're following that pattern. And then details paid from, paid to the tag, the group, more, you know, and this under more, we have notes, receipt, all details, exclude from analytics, etc. right? So I write this option first, you know, looks fine, not really a big problem. And I'm just trying to follow the similar approach. Then over here, I uh, try to remove this from paid from and sort of merge it over here, but sort of didn't really look great, uh, you know, because all the alignment is messed up here. It's starting, the, the letter is starting over here and then here. I mean, it's just, you know, alignment is not really, you know, great over here. Then I tried another one over here. Oops, let's bring this down. All right. So here I tried to put the bookmark icon inside. I forgot to add that over here. So I brought in the bookmark icon. Uh, the rest kept it as it is. Then I tried another options where I decided maybe this looks clickable. So maybe let's not make it clickable. Let's just keep it like this flat. That should be fine. And, uh, you know, keep the rest as it is. Okay. Um, then came up with another option over here where I then decided to bring this back to see if it looked good, but you know, it didn't really look good. So I decided to keep it back here again. So here I kept it back and then I brought back the bookmark icon that you see over here. So here you can swipe left and right, um, or you can use the bookmark icon, right? The rest of this looks good. And, uh, this is sort of finally, uh, what I, uh, chose. So here you've got the date and time, simple stuff. All right. Uh, paid from and then paid to would be, you know, to, to the company, to the company. And here this will have its own search experience, selection experience. I didn't design all of that. Uh, choosing the tag. We saw that in the previous video. Uh, if there's a group, you can add that to a group uh, for an account. And all of these would probably open up bottom sheets or an entire screen. So for example, paid to, to select Zeroda, we would probably have a full screen model, um, for tags, also a full screen model, um, a group would be full screen again. Um, or maybe full group could be a bottom sheet with just a few options account in again, same thing for those of you who, you know, might be confused what this is. Basically, let's say you got your salary for the month of Jan, but you got it on first February uh, for the month of Jan, right? So the transaction is going to be in February 2024 when it comes in your bank statement, but it's actually supposed to be for Jan 2024. So you go ahead and you say, hey, I want you to account this for Jan 2024, even though I received it in February 2024, right? So that's the thing. You can add notes. Uh, this would open up some sheet. I haven't really gone into the details of it. Um, you've got a receipt. You can add a receipt if you want. Of course, you can have to upload this. Um, there are a lot of smaller flows over here and most of them were absolutely fine. So I didn't feel like redesigning it or talking about it. Um, all details opens up a new sheet where you can view all the details and sort of download them, save it as a PDF, whatever it is. And here exclude from analytics. I kept it very simple like this. We can add a little bit of description if we really have to, but uh, you know, I would not really go ahead and complicate it so much. Um, visually, this looks fine. It's not that a lot of people are going to be spending a lot of time here. Uh, this looks a little bit more consistent with the design language we have been following across the app. Not that anything is wrong with this. This also looks absolutely fine, but I just feel like little unnecessary inconsistencies come over here uh, because sometimes you're using bold, sometimes you're not, sometimes there's all caps, sometimes they're not. Uh, for example, this text is bigger than this text. Um, you know, here different colors for hierarchy, here ad receipt, you know, I don't know why ad receipt needs to be notes. Ad receipt can be its own thing. And then, you know, you've got two colors over here. So again, you know, so much that's going on and just to remove the inconsistency and keep it simple, um, I came up uh, with this concept, right? Um, hopefully this uh, makes a lot of sense. There's nothing much to talk about the transaction details screen and uh, I hope this is a little bit better. 
So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So take care and bye-bye.